Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the past two weeks, Dunkley residents have again seen the impact of a Victorian Labor government who continue to make decisions without proper consultation with the local council, local businesses or the public, and who clearly demonstrate a lack of forward planning. Further to their sky rail debacle, which will see the Frankston train line become a roller coaster, we now know that the Labor government plans to move the train stable in yards from their current location in Carrum to an already occupied industrial land site at Cannanook in Seaford. This news of further land acquisitions and the Victorian state Labor government's heavy-handed approach to public transport infrastructure will again have a negative impact on my electorate of Dunkley, and the ripple effect will be felt by many local businesses, employees and families. Their behaviour and disregard for my community is beyond belief. In fact, this plan was revealed in the media, not through an announcement and with little or no consultation with the businesses affected. The land of at least seven businesses will be compulsorily acquired, putting over 200 jobs at risk and hundreds of families, along with their children. For example, Page Brothers Jaco, a well-known name across Melbourne and the Peninsula, a family business of over 50 years' history with 50 full-time employees, their land will be acquired and they may potentially have to shut down. Owner Stephen Page was quoted telling the state government that he and his employees are going to be fighting the decision and are very, very upset, amongst many other words which I cannot use in this parliament. Other business owners and I were only made aware of these plans through the Frankston Standard Leader newspaper. Their shock is understandable. Other businesses at risk include, at least the ones that we are aware of, are Sims Group Australia Holdings, McGee Truck and Machinery, Melbourne's cheapest, car, cheapest caravans and trailers, Seaford Panels and Charlie Diesel Services, but I suspect that will, will not be the extent of it. Frankston City Council's Mayor, Brian Cuneal, described this decision as a loss of key industrial land and that this move would result in the loss of vital businesses from the municipality. The audacity of state labour to impose this upon my constituents is just unbelievable. These businesses will be forced to close at great, great cost, cost, putting jobs at risk and, if they reopen, it may not be in Seaford or in my electorate. Many in this House and in my electorate are more than aware of the ongoing work by the Federal Government locally through my election commitment of $4 million to plan an extensive, extensive business plan into the extension of the duplication and electrification of the Metro Frankston line to Baxter which state Labor refuses to sign off on to allow this plan to start. This federal coalition government commitment is what many in Dunkley see as real action and future planning to meet community needs and to provide connectivity. One of the aspects of the business plan is to investigate the option of moving stabling yards to an unused land location further down the line, likely near Baxter, freeing up land to create more opportunity for economic growth within Frankston a position that Victorian State Opposition Leader Matthew Guy has endorsed. This is in stark contrast to what the Labor State Government is doing by forcibly moving businesses to sim simply store, store rolling stock on their land. And Opposition Leader Matthew Guy has joined me in opposing this land acquisition in Seaford. In his opinion piece in the local newspaper, local Mornington Peninsula resident and Channel 7 newsreader Peter Mitchell reflected on this lack of planning in local transport in our region. He said on the topic of land acquisitions and relocating the train stabling, many are up in arms over this, including the owners, management and 50 full-time staff at Seaford caravan firm Jaco Page Brothers, whose three-hectare site is earmarked for the wrecking ball. Frankston City Council favours a new stabling facility at Baxter in a project that would also deliver an electrified and duplicated track to the growing area. Ending this piece with, don't hold your breath waiting for an efficient transport system on the Mornington Peninsula. Returning to my initial point, if the Labor State Government bothered to ask the local community, or local council for that matter, or me, about what would be good for our community, perhaps we might be seeing some serious action to utilise the federal funds of $4 million to fully investigate the option of the electrification to Baxter and the benefits this would bring, including the relocation of the stabling yards to a better location. It's called future planning, but we're still waiting for the state government to sign off on the, on the project proposal report, and we have a community who don't believe the state, state Labor government are serious about public transport 
or in helping us complete this project. Thank you, Mr Speaker.